Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another edition of Profits at Noon. I see people are starting to trickle in now. We'll give everyone a minute to join us. I see Jeff, Gerardo, Jarrell, John, welcome. Great to have you guys here. Max, hope you're having a great day. Looks like we do have some folks trickling in still. So welcome everyone to the Thursday edition of Profits at Noon. We here at Ninjacators are incredibly excited to welcome you to this brand new weekly event. We are going live three days a week at noon Eastern time, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, where we will show you the levels that we are stalking for entry, and we will steer you clear of the market traps and news bombs that are waiting around the corner. So that means in addition to all the live analysis we're going to share today, including the levels to lock, which I'll get to in just a moment, um, and the trades that you'll be able to stalk, you'll be able to stay with us, see all this in action and see how everything plays out. So we do encourage you to join the, the sessions um, each day of the week. Again, we are going live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon Eastern for Profits at Noon. Uh, my name is Nate. Uh, I'll be co-hosting these sessions um, with Richard Krugel. Um, we'll introduce him in just a moment. Some of you may already be familiar with him. Um, he is a bit of a legend in terms of pitchfork strategies. Um, I know some of you have caught on to that. He is also... Uh, known from our morning bell sessions. So we've just kind of adjusted this slot. We're going in the middle of the day now and I'm joining the fray and I'm glad to be here. So again, my name's Nate. Richard's gonna take the reins in just a moment uh, and I'll do take one more chance to welcome everyone here. It looks like we have a pretty good group. Uh, Paul, Sally, great to see you. John, hello, I hope you are well. So um, we're gonna get started in just a second here. So before we get into these levels to lock and our analysis, I just wanna let you know, uh, we do have a newsletter that will accompany um, what you see in these sessions um, that will be our levels to lock. So we'll have more updates on that coming soon. Just keep an eye on your inbox. Um, we'll also keep you apprised here in these live sessions uh, of exactly what's happening. So in addition to all that cool stuff, we also have something we call our tool spotlights. So for today, Richard is going to bust out our Zorro futures trader. You may have seen some uh, noise about this in your email recently. Um, it is the weirdly powerful reversal strategy you can draw on your chart that can make you up to 15 times bigger profits on your wins. So very exciting stuff to show you there. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Richard, and he's going to get us started with today's analysis and the levels to lock, and I will check in with you guys as we wrap today's session. Cool. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Prophets at Noon. Uh, nice seeing some of the familiar names back here again. Thanks for attending. Uh, before we do get started with the day session, just please note that all information in today's session is provided for educational purposes only. It's not an offer or recommendation to trade futures, stocks, options, or forex. All right, let me just get rid of that screen. And hopefully you guys can all see my screen properly here. Hear me all right. If you can't, uh, please drop a note there in the chat box. But it should be good to go. All right, guys, as always, going to be looking at the ES, the NASDAQ, the YM, the Russell, crude oil, and gold. And for those who are new to today's session, you're going to see I'm going to be referencing a lot of these lines that you're seeing on my chart, some of them in blue, some of them in red. And they all mean different things. These ones with the blue lines, R1, R2, R3, and the PP is just for pivot points. Uh, standard indicated comes with your Ninja Trader platform, your pivot points for the day. But also very importantly, we've got a propriety in indicator. You can see these dashed lines on the top. It says projected range high. We've got blue lines down here, projected range low, and deviations of those uh, ranges to the downside. Now, these lines are based on volatility as, as used in the calculation previous days volatility. And it's pretty amazing to see how price typically gravitates towards these lines or either find support resistance or whatever it is you want to be looking at. Now, Nathan did mention that we're going to have that newsletter already pretty soon. So what I'll do my time, since I'm in South Africa and when most of, the, most of you are sleeping in the US, uh, I've got time then to update that newsletter. I'm actually going to give you all of these uh, levels to locks, what we call them, these uh, pivot points, as well as the projected ranges, and as well as then a game plan, what I would like to see or 
trade towards if I see this and that, for example. Also going to mention the important news events to uh, take note of for the day and for the week ahead, et cetera, so that when you actually wake up, that report is already there, the newsletter, and then you know exactly what I'm looking at. And during these sessions, you also probably see that I reference a lot of uh, price action, price structure. We'll also do a bit of Elliott Wave analysis. And then also combine that in with these levels uh, to lock to give me a sort of game plan, whether it's for today or directional bias for the week ahead or whatever the case might be. So that's just a quick sum up of what these lines are. Again, that will be available for you guys very soon uh, when we launch that worksheet. Now, I did take some screenshots for you guys of the ES, the NASDAQ, YM, Russell, Crude and Gold. I think Nathan will drop them there in the chat box while I'm going through each individual market. And that's just for today's levels. If you guys want to then maybe go and draw those levels on your own chart, then you're more than welcome to do that. All right, where I left off yesterday, I've actually drawn in a pitchfork here. I haven't used this previously in my analysis and basically just uh, anchored it on the three most prominent anchor points during this decline that we've been seeing. Now, it was sort of uh, almost by the 10th of Feb that I was thinking that this might have just been a correction. And that price would potentially move back to new highs. Did get a very nice strong move to the upside. But knowing me, and Nathan might probably tell you, always got a plan B. What would happen if price would then break certain levels to the downside that would invalidate that that was the end of it. And what we'll then expect is then another decline. Now that did happen. And then obviously during every one of these sessions on Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I just, I would, for example, have a bearish bias when a certain level is broken and then also expect in the bigger picture that price could, for example, target these lows again, or maybe even move lower. Now, You'll see that I've drawn in this pitchfork here. Just using those anchor points, we had resistance, we had support. Price broke below this area over here, which we call a center median line. Now, sometimes what I like to do to see if that pitchfork is actually the right setting to use, I like to draw a ray at the same angle as these median lines and superimpose them from previous, let's say, where areas undershot. And there was a little bit of resistance yesterday at that area. Price reached this lower median line, or what I call a 50% dash median line. We had a bounce back up again. Price couldn't stay above the center median line, and boom, strong move downwards again. Now, we did say yesterday that I would like to see, I think yesterday there was a pivot point right about here somewhere. Um, I'll have to go reference that video again. But uh, that if we're going to see a close above that, that we might see a larger move to the upside. Now, I did also mention there that I thought that this move to the downside is not over yet. And yesterday we had within this range, which I'll update right now, sort of around 3,955 at the lower end to 3,900, let's call 70 on the upper end, where we had a projected low from yesterday, as well as I think it was an S1. Uh, S2, so sort of a area where they all came together and also an area where it coincides with this lower median line. So quite often you'll see strong moves end at medium lines. In this case, during a down move, it's the first time it reaches a lower medium line, then see a reaction. So they make really good target points. But uh, if we have to reference the uh, levels to lock today as well, you see that price failed at R1. It did close briefly above it, reverse straight back to the downside. And this is where the newsletter will also become very helpful. You know, it could have a bullish uh, sort of a plan, but let's say in this case, a close above R1, we could see a move to R2. That would sort of be the wording that I'll use in the newsletter, but watch out that if we see a reversal and the close below the previous candle, you can see this would have been at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time this morning. So there would have been more than enough time that I would say, for example, if price breaks this previous candle's low, and I'll mention those levels, that we could potentially see a flush towards these levels, and in this case to S1, which already has been reached at 3,986 and a half. Price is now hovering sort of around about the projected range low. 
that labels a little bit hidden behind the other one at 3,981 and a quarter. Now that's already been a pretty damn strong move. Um, now where the price will actually reach these lower areas today, we get a projected low deviation one at 3,958.50. I think that is very possible to be attained today or tomorrow, potentially tomorrow. But like I said, the main thing I want you to take away from the EAS here today is this zone, which also coincides with these projected range, range lows, deviations. Tomorrow, we're, well, I won't, we won't have a session tomorrow, but uh, just take note of these levels and this pitchfork that I've drawn there. And that is potentially where I think support might step in. Now, I've downloaded a little bit more data than I usually do. And this was that low that occurred in October last year, strong move up, move down into December, another strong move back to the upside. So I'm seeing what we, what's happening here, whatever's happening here, is still as corrective in nature. All right, so I'm really going to be keeping an eye on these levels, on this low median line, as well as those projected deviation numbers. And probably by Monday, we'll have a better idea if prices reach it. You know, is it going to reach it very soon? Um, I don't know, maybe bounce around a little bit and then eventually reach it. But as price actually, the longer it takes moving sideways, for example, in time, the lower this projections will get because the median line is also sloping downward, right? And that uh, will then, for me personally, be a really good area to potentially get into long positions or build into long positions, assuming that if this is corrective with a very low risk, that we could see one hell of a move back to the upside. That being said, yesterday I also drew in this line over here. It's about 3,000, at around about 3,900. This is previous important market structure uh, during the strong move to the upside. If this gets broken, then I'm going to be worried. Then I think something else is going on here, and I think that we're going to see a potentially much deeper decline. But again, that's getting a little bit ahead of, ourself, of myself, should I say. Uh, so watch out for these zones, um, especially for today, the S2 at 3,964 and a half, and that projected range low deviation, 3,958 and a half. Right, so that concludes the ES. Uh, let's have a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, during the overnight session, hit R1, similar to the ES. Um, found resistance, reversed strongly back to the downside. Broke through the pivot point to 12,130, already reached the S1 at 12,070, and you can also see a projected range low. And the NASDAQ's case already been reached, what's at 12,040? Somewhere around about there. Same thing than the ES, a sort of same price structure on the way down. Also thinking that price might just have a little bit lower to go and then support might step in. I don't have all the data loaded on the NQ here, but also viewing this current decline as corrective in the bigger picture. So both the ES, NASDAQ, YM and the Russell for that matter, I think still a little bit lower can be expected over the course of the next few trading sessions. Right, then we have the YM sort of beginning of this month, the YM ran sideways in a range i drew in these lines and mentioned that if we get a break and close above these lines that that's probably going to give us the direction uh, i think we did a session around about here thinking that that could make a good target you see price reach it bounce back up and then when was this on the 21st price finally broke below it and closed below it again looking at the four hour chart so Unfortunately, we don't have that worksheet ready just yet. These are great examples of what I would have said in the uh, worksheet on the ES, NASDAQ, and YM is watch where price reacts or moves towards, and then also watch the previous candles, highs and lows. And then if price sits in this case with reverse lower, break below this previous candles low, in this case it was 33,104 plus minus, that you could then see a drop challenging this previous low, with that S1 slightly below at 32,964, that's already been obtained. And then we already also seen on the YM our projected range low being reached at 32,872. S2 has also been reached. So this might be an area where support now steps in. Again, we'll have to see by Monday when we resume our sessions where price is trading at. 
again also on the ym potentially some scope for more downside um, until the es actually reaches that area i've just shown you earlier then the russell actually broke above r1 stayed above the pivot during the overnight session broke above r1 at 1911 nearly reached r2 very strong re reversal low as following the major indices to the downside already reached projected range low i can't see that label again it's at 1887 and at s1 at around about 1886 a bit of a confluence there price just pipped these previous lows by probably a couple of ticks or so and uh, potentially also going to see support step in here maybe for the remainder of the day we already had one hell of a strong move to the downside i think what's going to happen tomorrow if we close towards the lows of today's trading ranges on the um on the indices that we're either going to see a move back to that day's pivot point tomorrow's pivot point or a continuation towards where i showed you on the ES that zone where I finally think uh, support might then step in. Also, obviously, on the R uh, Russell, seeing this entire move to the downside as corrective in nature. Then crude oil, also been pretty weak. Um, I think it was last week when that massive um, inventory report came out, huge amount of inventories. I think price initially moved a little bit to the upside, probably just, you know, guys manipulating the market a little bit the big boys flushing everyone out and then finally see the decline which was expected um we looked at a zone here sort of last week it was which might act as resistance which was just previous uh, uh, sorry support turning in then a resistance pricing moved lower we had a break lower again and pretty strong moves here on the crude oil um price open below today's pivot point which was at 74.73. We've had on a previous scandal already price reaching R1 at 75.67. But in the overall picture, I don't think crude oil is done going down yet. I'm just looking at this sequence to the downside. That looks like a three wave move to me. One, two, three. With this potential being a four, with another fifth wave down to follow. Now, yesterday I also mentioned that I think price is gunning for this low that was set in the beginning of Feb, which is 72.46. I just want to see what this retracement was. Probably at 78.6. Yeah, sort of found support at 78.6. Price found support at 61.8 previously, reached 78.6. But I still think that this low could be taken out. Um, <clears throat> Again, now I will play this if we do get uh, for the remainder of today, for example, probably won't touch crude oil unless we see a break below this previous candle's low at 74.53. If we get a close below that, then I think we can see price either today or tomorrow reach this projected range low at 73.78 and so on and so forth, 73.19. Again, we'll just have to recap things on Monday. Again, it will all make more sense once this uh, worksheet's ready uh, so you guys can have a better idea and be planned ahead of the um, morning session as well as the afternoon session. That's obviously why we also have these sessions during noontime, sort of during the middle of the day, US session, so that we, I can see where price is trading with relation to these levels and then also perhaps formulate an idea of where price might move for the remainder of the day until closing time. Right, lastly, we got gold. Um, beginning of Feb, just for those that are new here today, um, I've been saying that this looked a lot like a corrective structure, more particularly an ABCX. ABC entered and it actually reached an area almost picture perfectly. We expected resistance to come in and we had a strong drop lower. Break below this channel on the upside, typically our corrective moves work. They love running in channels or in pitchfork angles. And when pricing breaks one of those boundaries, that's a clear and definite signal that that correction has ended. Now, obviously also been following gold all the way to the downside. I've been saying last week that we've actually been had a long time target around 1840, 1835. Price are undershot a little bit last week, moved back to the upside and now has moved down again. So gold also pretty weak. 
in the bigger picture, I also think that what's happening with gold, maybe next week we'll look at maybe a daily chart, a daily time frame or so. So I can show you some other levels where I think this, if this is a correction, I'm still treating it as one, although a very strong one, uh, where that might end. I still think it is getting very close to an end, um, but there's also some invalidation levels that I'll show you on Monday. I just must make a note of that. So I do actually show you this and just not talk about it. Um, give me one second. So we're going to have a look at gold on a bigger picture time frame. And let's do crude oil as well. And that will be for Monday. Now I'll put that in my notes. If I forget, then guys, please attend again and remind me because I'm pretty forgetful these days, getting old. Anyways, um, same thing. New said it would have been great today. Price hit pivot points, refused to close above it. We had a move below a previous candle, and there was a price ran all the way to S1 at. 1825 spot seven it tested it pulled all the way back and we had a nice strong move the price recently touched that again so um yeah again all of these things and all of these levels i'm sort of like saying these things in hindsight now but kind of just like getting your guys minds ready for when this new set does come out that you like i said um know what my game plan is for the day uh, when you wake up, all of that's ready in the newsletter for you. And then you can basically, you know, get a good idea of where I expect markets to move towards. And quite often they do reach these areas to a very high degree. And they can either act as support or resistance. Some guys place their targets there, whatever the case might be. All right. So that concludes the profits, oh, sorry, the levels to lock. What we'll uh, always look at during these sessions. But as Nathan said, um, I've got something to show you guys here today. It's actually one of my favorite indicators here at Ninja Caters. Now, most of the products we have at Ninja Caters, I do but four, five live trading sessions using those indicators, show how I use my, uh, whether I program ATM strategies or how many contracts I like to trade, where I like to place my targets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I've done what we call the Zorro Futures Trade. I'm going to be showing you that right now. Um, and this is set to a one-minute time frame. I like using this indicator to sculpt the markets. There's an automated feature built into this, as well as a semi-sort of automated trailing feature as well. Again, I'll be showing you that in just a while. But what I'm trying to get at here is that it's probably one of the most simplistic tools um, in Ninjakator's uh, arsenal. And um, I must say, probably one of the ones I like trading the most as well, just because of its simplicity. Uh, you know, not really overkilled with too many indicators on your chart, uh, not too much chart clutter. And once you actually got the automated feature going as well, it's sort of just sitting back and let everything sort of semi-automated uh, take charge of the trade for you. So I'm just going to look at previous examples here today. You see, I've drawn in these lines. I was just doing a bit of prep and would have shown you what I'd like to look at here. Now, you'll notice that there are two buttons here on the left-hand side. This one is the Zorro pattern, which I'm going to draw right now. And then we also got a trend detector line, which are these red and green lines over here. Now, the trend detector line, before I get to the Zorro pattern, uh, basically tells you if the, if the indicator thinks the market's in a bullish move or in a bearish move. So quite often, if you want to use the Zorro pattern, you want to, let's say, trade to the upside, you're bullish. You want to wait for the trend detector to turn green and only take long trades. Obviously, the uh, inverse side, if you want to trade to the downside, wait for the trend detector to turn red. Now, there's a setting in there, for example, where you can uh, change or the trend detector can look at a higher time frame. In this case, I'm looking at a one minute. So it can do its calculations based on a five minute time frame. This is what we're seeing here at the moment. Right now, quite often, there is a bit of user input uh, or thinking involved with this, obviously, from a trader side of thing. Uh, the system doesn't do everything for you. There might be times where I change between a one minute. Um, so it looks at this current time frame I'm trading from. And if you do it to switch this uh, trend detector to one minute, it will obviously be much closer to or more sensitive to a change in direction. Now, what I'll do here, and now is actually going to get to the Zorro pattern here. 
what you do is you go and click this box over there on the left hand side and you click Zorro pattern. You see my drawing tools already active here. Now, what you want to do is let's say in this case, the trend detector went from a bearish condition into a bullish condition, sort of around about this area at 4,023 earlier today. Again, on the one minute time frame. Then what you would do is you would then use your Zorro pattern. You want to select a low, in this case, a prominent low. And let's say you were at this stage over here where a decline started to occur. And you want to anchor the top of that Z pattern, like over here, at the top of that. Let's say price start moving lower here. Then what the Zorro Futures Trader pattern does, it obviously creates a Z for Zorro, which is why it's called a Zorro pattern. And it creates this zone here, green for a buy entry zone. And if you were to, let's say, during a decline, Let's say do something like this, high to a low. You want to trade to the downside. That zone would be in red. Now, very importantly, I mentioned that there is some user sort of thinking behind this. There are some inputs that you would need to change here. And during the, if you're interested in this indicator, in those four videos that I've created, I go through the processes of, and it's actually some extra, let's say, risk parameters that I built into the Zorro pattern um, is that I also like to use an ATR, which is your typical standard average true range. All right. Now, before I get to that, just keep in mind that it's on the bottom side here. It's set to its default settings. Nothing um, weird about it. And it's available on NinjaTrader for free. It's one of the indicators it comes built in with. All right. So, Let's assume for a moment that I was here, which I wasn't. And I want to trade to the upside. I've seen a very strong move up and all of a sudden price start moving lower. See price start moving lower here, right? Now, you also see this little button over here. It's called trading disabled at the moment. Now, if you enable that button, it will place a buy order right at the top limit of the zone, assuming you want to trade to the upside, right? Because this is a bullish scenario that you're looking at. And as soon as price would then reach the top upper limit of that zone, uh, the will automatically have a trade activated for you. Now, it would not place stop losses. It would not place targets, which is why I incorporated the ATR, which is the average to true range. And on the side, I've also built in three automated trading strategies or ATMs, automated trade management. And you can see that I have them here on the right hand side. Right now, this comes with the uh, software. If you're interested in this today, and you can see I've created one for a four tick, a six tick, and an eight tick. Now, for today's purposes, I'm not going to go through the exact settings and all that stuff, but I'm going to be showing you with lines how I typically would trade this. And assume that we were sitting here somewhere. I drew in that line and price started moving lower, right? Um, I would then go in enable the automated feature or it to take a trade for me. Again, you have to have an ATM strategy attached to this. And this is where the, the why I mentioned, I've also got three different ones here, a four, a six, and an eight tick. Now it's set to an eight tick here. And reason being is that because of the ATR at that stage, while price was moving lower, your average true range was moving to the upside. Now, as price was approaching this, you would then need to, from your side, the user or the trader, decide what the ATR was. In this case, it was around about 2.5 prior to price reaching that area. I'm just going to cancel this quickly. Yeah. You can also just click that button again and it will disable it for you. But uh, in any case, according to what the ATR is, and I've got different ranges, and this is all explained in the instructions and the videos that are recorded uh, trading live sessions, four of them that uh, 
according to what your ATR or what range you're looking at, you then need to go into the settings of the Zorro pattern. And you need to go and change the width of that zone. Again, that will be explained in those training videos or trading videos, which I see as trade or sorry, inst instructional videos as well as what I'm trying to say. And then according to those range, then go and select the um, right ATM strategy. Now, if this all sounds confusing, this is what I do with the actual risk management side of things. So let's say price was here, it starts moving lower. I activated the uh, Zorro Futures Trader auto entry function. And as soon as price would have flipped that upper limit, right? you would have got in a position. And the stop loss would have been placed. No, I can't really get to that. Let me just see if I can pull that out of the way. Yeah. I'm just trying to get as accurate as possible here. Yeah? Let me redraw that again. Get these things out of the way so I can show you properly what I want to do here. So there's not just the actual pattern that you draw and there you go. Um, there is some thinking, like I said, involved here. And you really need to be on the ball, especially you want to scalp with this. Um, and know what your ATR is and then select the appropriate ATM strategy, a strategy to go with that. So here's a great example of me selecting the right ATM strategy according to what the ATR is telling me. And price moved in. You probably would have been filled at this candle over here. And guys, there might obviously be slippage now and then, right? That's just trading as well, especially from a one-minute time frame. I'm trying to explain here how I, or let's say the automated feature that I built in here. You see, it's got custom targets, stop losses, profits, according to those ticks. And I've also got a custom strategy built in here that would automatically trail your stop loss higher at certain levels. Now I'm going to visually quickly show you with these lines. Assume that we got in there. You would have a stop loss at the low end of the zone. That would have been, like I said, using a Zorro 8 tick. That would probably be an 8 tick wide stop. Again, you can trade this on any market. You can also trade this on the uh, micro contracts. Obviously, this is the mini ES. So an 8 ticks, that would be, what is that? 100, 100 bucks per contract. Now with this ATM strategies I'm using, you need to trade two contracts. So if you can't afford then a $200 over or loss on a trade, then it's always easier just doing that on the micro lots. I just used two because it's a very unique trading uh, strategy that I use and you do need to trade with more than one contract. Again, but don't let that stand in your way. You can always trade the micros on that, right? So initially taking an eight tick stop from entry, right? And what the automated uh, ATM would do is automatically place a target at eight ticks above that zone, which would be here. Right. And that would be your first target. Now, there would be a secondary target. And in this case, it would be set at 40 ticks. Now, that's just... Let's just draw another line there. That's just uh, a five to one risk reward on your original tick size. So forget about the contracts you're trading now, right? That would be at that level over there. Price doesn't always reach that, that's for sure. But it's just like a set uh, setting that I put in for a distance on my second target. But very importantly, you would get out in here automatically with the Zorro pattern um, entry feature. And then quite often, and this is quite amazing when I like this, is that from that zone, you, I would say more than 60, 70, 80% of the time sometimes, get a reaction that at least runs, if you use the right ATM, or sorry, look at the ATR and select the right ATM strategy, get a reaction initially from there that your first target would get risk, uh, reached at the very least. And what then happens is you booked one contract, you got one contract left. Both of your stop losses will be still, well, both of them were originally here. You'll only have one contract left at the same area. And let's say price would then reverse afterwards and take you out. Then you'll be flat from a profit and risk perspective. 
if that makes sense. Obviously, you'll have to pay uh, both sides of the transaction commission for the two contracts that you traded. But I didn't factor that in as just part of trading, right? So the idea here is, is to book profit as soon as possible on your first contract, okay? Equal to the same distance of where your entry to your stop loss would be. In this case, eight ticks to the upside. In this case, you would have had one contract left. You leave the stop loss there. And actually, the ATM strategy would also leave the stop loss there. And like I said, should price again come back and take you out, then overall, from profit and loss perspective, you flatten the trade. Now, what re what's really nice here is with this ATM strategy, it gives you those opportunities to get into those runners where you know the market really goes in your direction. And you sometimes get five to one, six to ones. I sometimes have 12 to one. I've had a 20 to one trade on using the strategy once before. Um, so again, getting ahead of myself. So let's say on that first eight ticks, right? You're out. You would have a stop loss here. So we only got one contract going. You would not have got stopped out here. Then I've got the ATM strategy programmed to look at a three to one move in my direction, which would be 24 ticks. That's eight times three. If price would then reach that level, your ATM strategy would automatically take your uh, remaining position or contract stop loss to break even plus a couple of ticks above it. Right now, I'm going to delete that. Now, like I said, I then have... I had then have a hard target on my second uh, position at 40 ticks, which is just a five to one. All right. So once this gets hit, the ATM automatically takes your, your remaining position or a stop loss and brings it to break even plus two ticks in your favor, whether you're trading uh, to the upside or to the downside. Then I would have my target at 40 ticks. And there's then various ways that I showed you in that um, live recording sessions that I can either trial my then my stop out manually. Um, because once you actually reach the 24 ticks in this case, um, that's it from the automated side. And the ATM has done its job. So then you need to then manually either trial your stop or wait for price to hit your final target to the upside. In this case, just a set target of five to one according to your initial uh, distance from your entry to your stop loss. And what I quite like to do, if you get strong moves like this, you either, you know, once price hits at 24, wait for candles to continuously end or um, close to the upside and start trailing your stop while you're keeping that one on the upside there as price approaches it and you would have been out there. Automatically, because you've got an ATM, your stop loss will disappear as well. So in this case, I would have had a beautiful overall well, on your second contract, a good five to one, and on your first contract, a one to one. So a very, very nice trade overall. And that's pretty much it, guys. You know, I can go on and on and on about the Zorro thing. It might look visually a little bit complicated in the beginning, but really is not. Um, when the Zorro Futures Trader came out, firstly, and um, it did not use the ATR. In fact, this is a separate thing that I just used on my side. I explained in the videos why I look at it. And for me personally, it's just a great indicator to look at. Not that it's a special indicator or something, but just that I know what my, you know, how volatile the market is currently. What are these average ranges of these candles? And then you can go and set these zones accordingly so you don't get stopped out too often. Because if you're going to use the Zorro Trader uh, from scratch, the default setting is a zone of two two ticks that's too small so that's why i'm saying you need to look at that atr you need to then go adjust the zone according to what the atr is telling you again i give you those ranges during these trading sessions and then as well choose the corresponding uh, atm strategy that goes with that and bob's your uncle right um i've already been going on for quite some time here but what i want to quickly do is There will be instances where, and obviously, when you during the uptrend, price makes high highs, high lows, high highs, high lows, so forth, so forth, so forth. Now, let's say there were instances where you then see 
price make a high breaks a previous market structure in this case a higher low and your let's say your trend detector has not turned green uh, red yet in this case then i would switch to the one minute time frame and that would immediately change that for me i can actually do that for you now whoops i shouldn't have done that you see here's all your settings and it's currently looking at a higher time frame you see this one here enable higher time frame it's looking at a five minute so if I have to uncheck that, go OK, then at this stage, as soon as price broke below that higher low, the one minute would have changed to a red, giving you the go ahead to draw your Zorro pattern. In this case, this would have been a short going from these highs to these lows over here and just extend it to the right. Beautiful example. And this stage price as it approached was also sort of in a range where I would have used the Zorro A tick. So it would have been exactly the same as before. Let's say in this case, you would have gone short automatically. And obviously you have to enable the auto entry feature. You would have got short there automatically. Your stop loss would have been above the zone. Again, A ticks. Oh, where's my ruler gone here? Yeah. You see, that's what I mean. Yeah, you get that initial eight ticks in your favor. In this case, it happened very quickly. We well, would have been out. Damn it. Why is that doing that anyway? Basically, on the very next bar, in the very next candle, you would have been out and one to one. And that's what I like about the strategy. You can now sit back. You don't care. In my case, I'm not worried anymore. You sit back and relax. If you do, do get taken out, you on zero from a loss perspective, right? Or profit and loss perspective. So in this case, again, uh, it would be set at 24, which was there. If price would have reached that area, your OTM strategy would automatically then bring your stop loss to break even, plus a couple of ticks. And... In this case, also, I think we had a 40 tick move where that secondary target would have been and price would have taken me out there as well. Two trades in a row, really easy setups. Most of it's automated, the entry part, most of the initial trade management, obviously placing your stop losses, your targets, etc., and then also waiting for the certain levels to get hit for the computer to then basically with ATM strategy to trial your stop to break even plus a few ticks in your favor. And then you take over and manually decide if you either want to trail your stop behind candles. Again, one minute, you've got to be fast. You've got to check things out. But, you know, some people don't like scalping. You can do this on three minutes, five minutes. We even got guys doing this on one hour time frames, even larger for bigger moves. And that's pretty much it. I think it's very self-explanatory. Um, again, I've shot four live trading sessions, spent quite a bit of time on that. And I do like this feature that I built in the ATR, um, <clears throat> the ATR to look at what template you should be using. Again, those templates I designed myself. They're not, you know, super complicated or anything like that, but it's just a very useful. So volatility doesn't take you out too, too much. Get that opportunity to book your first profit and then let your profits run on your remaining contracts. This is exactly what we're trying to do. Okay, that's it from our side. Awesome. Thank yeah, you so much, Richard. Yeah, it was an excellent presentation and it was great to really, you know, go and pull, pull up the hood and, and see how this all works. Yep. Um, great session. Yeah. Thank you, John. We're glad to have you, everybody here, the familiar faces. Um, we love to see it again. These sessions taking place three days a week, uh, live at noon Eastern time. So please join us again on Monday for the next session. We do want to leave a little room for Q and a, just in case, uh, any of you guys and gals had a question about any of the analysis or about our tool spotlight on the Zorro Futures Trader today. Uh, and you may have noticed I've also just popped in a link into the chat. Um, and so what that does, as a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and show you, Richard, I'll take over this screen share really yep, quickly. Please do. Um, and we'll just make sure we pull up the right thing here. Perfect. And if you're seeing this, ideally, we have the Ninjicator storefront pulled up. So what we've got here is basically if you hit our storefront, 
to come grab the, the Zorro Futures Trader. You can see it's listed for $9.97. So I just want to show you what that coupon does. And we'll also hit some of these features and again, make room for Q&A. So you can see here uh, listed on our storefront, you can come right to our website, go into the shop and search for this. And if you were to add this to the cart or to buy now, um, you can see it's $9.97. And then it'll come down to 297 with this link we've got for you today. So check it out. Once you hit this link, and this is only for today, um, it'll go ahead and bring this down 70% to 297. So if you have any questions about that, um, just let us know. But we did want to make this opportunity available to you. We want to have cool surprises, cool perks for the people that are joining us in these sessions that'll be exclusive to these sessions. So stuff you're not going to find elsewhere. Um, and we really want to make that available to you. So just really quickly showing you there what that link does. Um, let us know if you have any questions about that, but you can save 700 bucks instantly on this whole package that Richard just showed you. Um, and again, in addition to just some of the core features, you can see we are really have built out um, some of the bonuses as well. Um, and again, a lot of our packages are geared towards helping you hit the ground running. Um, no guesswork, um, no feeling alone. Um, and then of course, layer that with you know top of the line support. You can call our phone number anytime. Um, you can also contact us via email. Uh, and we're always happy to help you guys with that. But you can see there's just so much in this package. I encourage you to hit that link, take advantage of this coupon. Also spend some time here to understand all these resources, all these bonuses you're getting. Uh, and then of course, with, you know, try it risk-free with our 100% risk-free peace of mind, love it or replace it guarantee. So um, again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, we're always here and we're always happy to help um, with that. So if you had any questions before we wrap in just a sec here, please feel free to fire away in the chat and we'll make sure to address that. Um, John says he's, he'll see us on Monday um, and understood Pure Pattern Trader is a great package, John. So definitely spend some time with that. And all the stuff I just said about support definitely applies there too. Um, if you're getting acclimated to a new package, you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Again, all of these packages, in addition to what we're including in them, are all layered with top of the line support. Um, so we are with you every step of the way um, in this process. As you're getting started, whether you're a new trader or a veteran trader, um, everybody's different. And you know we really enjoy speaking with, with all of our customers and really spending time to ensure that these strategies and systems are, are not only you know being used, but implemented to the best of their ability. So we have a lot of guys on deck um, that can help you with that. So sure. just one more time, I'll re just remind you guys to hit that link. It is available there in the chat um, and you'll knock off 700 bucks on this whole package today, which is insane. Um, so again, that will be gone uh, after today and is exclusive to, to you. So um, before we wrap, I just want to make sure we don't have any questions. It looks like we'll be good on that. Um, John yep. says the support team has been great and new to the Ninja platform. Perfect. I'm great. I'm very glad to hear that, John. Um, and if you are new to the Ninja Trader platform, um, I, I hate to say it, but I don't think there's any better anybody better you can come to. Honestly, um, you know, Ninja Trader themselves obviously have a great infrastructure. Um, we pride ourselves in being one of the largest third party providers, but we know the platform. Uh, backward and forward. So happy yep. to help you with that sort of stuff too. And and then of course, Richard um, as well. Um, does it look like my screen share was coming up at all or maybe it wasn't? Let's see. I've, I've been seeing it. You've been seeing it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just want to make sure it looks like looks good. maybe. Okay, great. Um, if you're joining us on YouTube, you may not see that. So We'll work that out and um, yeah, we'll be back again. Again, remember profits at noon going live three days a week. We'll have updates for you on the levels to knock levels to lock newsletter that will accompany these sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and basically you'll be able to hit the ground running um, right away. So please uh, join us on Monday and Richard, if you had any parting wisdom for us before we go, uh, I'll give you the floor once again. Well, that's pretty much it from me. Like I said, a very simple tool, the Zorro Futures Trader. Um, <clears throat> this is probably for John. I'm planning on doing a full live, well, live trading recordings on a peer sure. pattern trader as well. Just don't have an exact date for that yet. So keep an eye out for that. Um, these are new things we're doing. A lot of customers buy stuff, you know, some of these, um, these uh, systems or indicators, or individual things, 
might have been around for a year or so, you know, so we're continuously trying to upgrade them. Uh, that's also why they brought me on board. If there were any bugs, so forth, then I tend to pinpoint them as well as then, you know, do these training videos uh, where I trade them live so you can get, you know, a better idea of how I would say someone else would use it. I'm not saying you should use it, but uh, yeah, just giving you, um, you know, maybe some extra clues of how you could possibly trade it. So yeah, um, thanks everyone for joining again today. Um, as always, have a fantastic rest of your day tomorrow as well and a great weekend. And like Nathan said, we'll be back on Monday again. Perfect. That's it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Richard. And like he said, we'll see you again soon. So everyone in the meantime, have a great weekend. I really look forward to picking back up on Monday. We'll have lots of great updates coming your way and excited to see those familiar faces. So you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Nate. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.